<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is In Touch with Tibo Touch. Good afternoon to everybody joining us right now. I'm excited to be here, and um, I'm, we're going to do something um, for everybody who's joining us for the first time. Youth, we're celebrating our young people in the building from Hort School Secunda. Tell me about this incredible app, first of all. The two of you decided to come with this amazing app called Safe Space. We did, yeah. Yeah, what is Safe Space? So basically, Safe Space is just an app that aims to connect users who are struggling with their mental health, you know, depression, anxiety, um, to connect with people, professionals in that field, to be able to reach help, make it easier, easily accessible to those kinds of people, and also to help people invest more in their mental health, because we know these days that a lot of people um, tend to throw their mental health out the door, you right. know, right. just kind of... From my experience being a student, um, I experience a lot of those problems, you know, like at school, you go to school, right. you're working um, all the time, you get home and it's like you never have time to yourself. So we're trying to create something that is able to help people invest in themselves and um, as well as connect people to medical professionals if they need it. How did the conversation start though, Nalazi? Like, was one of you guys suffered depression? Or <laughs> one of you, that something has to inspire the thought, like has to spark the thought, right? Yeah, well, actually, the mental health app wasn't the initial idea. Okay. So Nonjabula here watched a video where they spoke about how the people who created social media built this big city and forgot to put hospitals, police, police departments. Like, it's a whole city with no safety departments mm. in it. So when we first thought of a business idea, we thought, let's create a, a social media app that's negativity-free. But then we thought Ooh, that wouldn't work. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You said let's create a social media app that is negativity free. Yes. <laughs> now nah, I understand. Yeah. So then as time went by, as we worked more on our business idea, we realized that that won't work because the reason why you're on social media, you post for the likes, you right. want to hear the comments. Right. So if we now create an app where we won't allow you to get those things, it won't really work. Uh -huh. Then we went back to the drawing board. We realized that we have friends that suffer such mental health illnesses. Then we like, we never know how to interact with them. You know, they don't want to go to psychologists because they are avoiding the whole physical interaction. True. And especially coming from black families, to be specific, yeah. when you tell them you have depression, it's a matter of why you're stress at such a young age. Yeah, yeah. So we it's thought about, oh, yeah, it's stress, son. You, so you, yeah. have, you wear a blazer to school, you use a casual calculator. Right. Why are you depressed? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so we're like... That's a good point. Yeah. That's true. So we're like, if you have access to Facebook, social media at such a young age, why don't we give you help? At, the, at your fingertips because taking into consideration how everything is now moving to the fourth industrial revolution right. why don't we bring help just on your phone because that's where everybody is these days I mean taking into consideration the COVID-19 pandemic yes there were restrictions where at a point and time you couldn't even go to a psychologist. Yo, so now we thought this is a fire. I hope you're <laughs> <the camera. laughs> zooming in so you can see the conviction. Like, I hope you're getting it right. You know what you're saying is so profound. Keep going. I'm so sorry. So then we're like, yes, what's what's there? What else than a, a mental health app that's right. going to now connect you to the medical professionals without you having to fear the physical interaction or right. to fear the stigma around mental health? And also just to create a space for people who aren't affected but don't know how to deal with those around them that are already affected, you know. You. Maybe educate them on how to interact with an affected person. So, so at the time you guys put this app, you probably were in grade 11. Grade 10. Grade 10. Grade yes. 10. Unbelievable. Yep. <laughs> and so t t talk to me, t t t just give me a whole structure. Um, who then, you know, put the software, how are you going to connect uh, the victim or your clients with the doctors. Give me the whole, who was the architect behind this whole great idea? Okay, so when we first started out, we forgot about the techni technicalities. But then as we worked on the app, we realized that we can't make the app ourselves because okay. we, we don't have such knowledge. We, don't, we haven't acquired skills in that department. Right. Taking me for consideration um, into consideration, I'm not a technology fan. Computers, mm -hmm. laptops frustrate me. So we decided to bring in an expert. She, he, oh, he is an uh, a computer scientist by profession. Okay. So we spoke to him, told him our business idea, and he was like on board with the whole building of, you, of the app. You know what I like, Nanjabulo, is that 
you guys didn't limit yourself to the fact that you're not tech gigs, you're not so tech savvy. No. You, you realize there's an opportunity. You realize that we have a problem in society yes. and you didn't let your capacity limit you. Wow, that's fire. Thank you guys you. are fierce. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thank you. I like that. All right, so the developer came on board, right? But yes. there are cost implications to this. Definitely. You know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah. And, and one will think, because people like to move when there's capital, but you guys are not driven by your balance sheet. Nope. You were driven by some superpower, the cause, the cause yeah, the <laughs> to get it done. Yeah, definitely. yeah, tell me about that because I think that's what's missing in society. People think if I get a funder, I can then be innovative, whereby innovation attracts funding. Basically, yeah. Right? So, yeah, finances were the last thing on our mind. <laughs> Finals are honestly, the last thing in your mind. Honestly, because um, honestly, one of the quotes that comes to mind right now is um, one of the things that I live by is be the change that you want to see in the world. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. So we were definitely motivated by the why instead of how much it would cost us. Would it even make us a profit? That was definitely not the driving force behind this. You know, we actually had one of our friends who was suffering from depression. We had no idea how to help her. You know, how to how do we help this person? She's right here. We see her struggling. We don't know what to do. Wow. You know, so we know that we have a bunch of people even in, around us, our friends, our families sure. that are struggling with these issues these mental health problems True. and we were like what can we do to help them I can imagine. so yeah that was definitely our motivation behind it so finances were definitely <laughs> now 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 i understand that everything is still in development phases yeah. yes but you've caught so much attention like you guys come all the way from secunda and you're in <laughs> yeah. johannesburg with me right now <laughs> yes. that is that's serious you know yeah, what i mean it is. and it started with the leap of faith mm -hmm. to put True. this idea forth Next, definitely who knows you could be sitting in Silicon Valley next time. Honestly. You know what I mean? Knows. <laughs> Girls from Secunda. Girls from Secunda. Not Sekunda. limited by their pocket, not limited by their network, but driven by their faith, their tenacity, their skill. As you speak, I'm healing, man. Wow. Because I can't teach in this. Hey, I'm telling you. You guys are ministering to me. So, family, you go back to your parents. Yes. Because I know traditionally as black people, we want you first to do well in school. We don't want to hear about your <laughs> app skills yep, yes. development. How did you overcome the challenge of convincing your parents that you will still be academically active, but you have to build this app? Well, firstly, when we started out, because it all began with the competition, uh -huh. my parents didn't understand a word, and I'm a very talkative person. I can so, tell. <laughs> so while yeah. they watch the news, I'll be like... You have to get a show like, on Touch HD. <laughs> <laughs> While they watch the news or so peas, I'd be like, so me and Nunjavula decided on, and they're like, we don't understand. We don't understand what you're talking about. And I, it, would frust it would frustrate me because I felt like they're not supportive enough. Gotcha. But then I could understand where they're coming from a point where they want me to do well in school. And this thing is all I talk about lately. And it's towards now the end year exams for grade 10. Wow. And, and I'm going on and on and on about safe space. So when we won the competition, that's when they realized, okay, this is they're serious. capable. This is serious. <laughs> They it's, can do this. So, <laughs> well, tell me about the competition. Like, how big were other contestants' ideas? Oh, we definitely had a lot of teams with amazing ideas oh, on so board. Oh, so these are teams. Yeah, yes. definitely teams. So the competition had um, three phases to it. Right. So the first one was just in the initial idea, you know, what problem are we solving? Sent those in, got through the t to the second round. Second round was just them deciding on who's actually going to make it to this boot camp. Wow. And so we were one of nine teams across the entire South Africa who made it to this the final. This was a national competition. This was a national yes. competition. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, this is incredible. Get on touchhd.co.za. Listen live right now. I have two of the better minds nationwide. <laughs> and it's, wow, this is incredible. So tell me, region by region, did you guys represent in Pumalanga or it didn't matter what province you're from? You just boom. Uh, funnily enough, we were the only Pumalanga team there. The only so, Pumalanga team? Yes. <laughs> wow. We were definitely representing. <laughs> Shut out, man. Unbelievable. And oh. then, obviously, you had to be narrowed down. Yes. To probably top five, top three. Top three. Uh, top three. Yes, it was top three. Don't you think what you guys have done beyond just being an incredible app, but it's also a calling 
because it's such a selfless idea. You guys are not trying to make money. You're not mm -hmm. trying to come up with an app that's going to make you billionaires. You're coming up with an app that, that's addressing social ills. Definitely. Yeah? Yeah. And, 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 and we don't believe it, but do you think, I, I don't know during your, I mean, during my time in high school, mm -hmm. I cannot narrow some of our, oh, I don't want to diagnose, you know, what <laughs> happened then or, or attribute it to depression, but I really think we dealt with a lot of pressure. Definitely. You know, we dealt with a lot of pressure in high school. Yeah. Dealing with being the first generation to go into uh, multiracial schools. You know, we dealt with a lot of pressure of how many white people are in your class? Mm -hmm. Are you in that class that has no whites at all? <laughs> you know, which is yeah. associated with being average. Mm -hmm. These are the type of things we dealt with. I went to high school in the 90s. And not only that, I went to high school in the VAL. You know what I mean? So we dealt with some serious racial pressures. Being the first to date a white girl. Ooh, I can imagine. I'm just saying those kind of things. <laughs> yeah. And you like, you want to hide her. Mm. You, know, yeah. you, got your, you got your black sister so that you show you show you're keeping it. We dealt, we dealt with serious pressures. Definitely. You know where um, a scientific calculator was, a, was a, like an amazing accessory to have. <laughs> These are yes. things. Yeah, I'm being honest. Yeah, it's you know, true. You guys now, your pressure is iPhones. But I oh. think you guys live in a... <laughs> You live in the height of pressure where how many followers you have. We didn't even care about those mm -hmm. things. We didn't care the type of Android phone you have. So do you think there's a serious or there's a, you know, a degree of um, mental illness amongst young people, especially grade 12 in your space, that are dealing with silent cancer? That's not diagnosed yet. When I mean about cancer, I'm talking about mm. this debilitated state of mentalness. A that, thousand percent. Yeah. A thousand percent. I mean, speaking from personal experience, literally, like I said before, it's easy to get to that dark place because mm. you're going to school eight hours a day, working, 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 mm. getting home. You hardly have time for yourself. You can't even do the things that you enjoy, things mm. to invest in your own self, right. you know, to get yourself into a better place. You can't do that. You're studying 24-7. It's homework. It's the next assignment. It's the next test, the next exam. So we're definitely always on go, always tired, you know, everyone around us, our matric friends, we're all just fatigued all the time, but right. we're pushing through because of the pressure, you know, we need to do well, we I need to, you. you know, get good marks, we're trying to apply next year. So yes. definitely, the mental illness rate is rising amongst young people, yes. and that's one of the reasons I can attribute it to. So mm. safe space being the act, the, the domain, the business, Yes. what is the actual cost to see this app running? Because I'm sure you've done your risk analysis you've done your operational plan cost what is it going to take have we launched the app are we about to launch the app what is holding it from being live okay well firstly the first obstacle that we came across was age because we were 16 back then and in south africa when you're 16 you're not even a person yet because you're a minor. So we couldn't get the first part of it done, which are the legal fees. We can't even, the name oh, itself yes. aren't, isn't even yeah. entitled to us yet because we just, just turned 18. So we couldn't get intellectual property of the name. So those obstacles, which was something we didn't even have in mind back then. Couldn't you have like maybe a, some guardian or power of attorney handed to somebody older? That was uh, um, an idea that right. came across. But then COVID happened and then ah. suddenly everything yeah. stopped. And then now we even got to a place where we used to text each other like we need safe space more than our user base. Yeah, because now especially we, in the height of COVID. Yeah. Exactly, because we now... Because what most people forget about COVID, it's not just a physical um, illness. It affects your mental well-being too. True. Because you sit there alone in your room, isolating, thinking, how many people have I affected with this illness? Hmm. How many people will survive? Because yes, I'm surviving. It's the sixth day now. Right. How many people died from this and haven't gotten it from me? Now being in a space where people aren't even affected, you, they see you as this virus walking around because they fear for their lives themselves. And so... If, yeah. I, if I may throw the question, like, do you think there's an opportunity to integrate what you guys have learned, your uh, research, mm -hmm. to form part of the curriculum, maybe to help the education department to best deal with mental, to have a subject dedicated to men, mental health? 
Definitely. This is something that, um, it's funny that you say this. Because <laughs> you know, and I, biology. I'm <laughs> mental health. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, Loaz and I had this conversation just um, last week, I think. Mm. Yes. Um, we were having a talk and we're like, oh my gosh, we're literally dying. My chick is going crazy. Why aren't we taught about these things? You know, True. we're studying life orientation, but we're learning about things that aren't even relevant Irrelevant anymore. Relevant stuff, man. Literally. Like, I mean, even Carl Young must update his psychology stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't write it during the height of social media and depression and exactly, stuff. Exactly. So I really think yeah. your research has to be integrated into our curriculum. That would be amazing. I can set happen. an audience with the right people in the education department to, for them to hear you out. The question is, are you guys ready to put a pitch that will make sure a thousand it's percent. a grand slam pitch? A thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Reminds me of the time after we won. We wrote an open letter to the president. Where oh, which, get out of here. <laughs> you guys wrote an open letter to the president? <laughs> we did. We <laughs> that letter yesterday because he was never going to read it because yeah, so he lost his iPad. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, we wrote it but it never really got anywhere. How we thought that business and life orientation should be just taken away from the curriculum in four subjects such as entrepreneurship. Right. Which will now help the country's economy and as you've said now, safe space or a subject where we'll be taught about our mental well-being, how to deal with such pressures wow. and how to handle the pressures of Unexpected situations like COVID-19, which is something that we have no idea of. You guys won one of the most toughest competition in the country. And as winners, you wrote an open letter to the president. And nobody got back to you. We didn't send it through. I think. Oh, we, you didn't send it through. We wrote okay. it. We wrote it, and then we got doubts. Will he read it? Of Is course he will. <laughs> of course he will. Come on. I still think you should send it. Give it a shot. Definitely. I Definitely. Mean, yeah. Tonight yeah. we're sending that email. Send, send, <laughs> because send them. Yeah, but now, are you? What is? What is exact? What's your goal? What's your objective? For this mail, you you want to be heard, or you want your research to be to form part of the school curriculum? Since you're saying you guys needed more in grade twelve, you experiencing this on you know you got you on the ground. You guys are on the ground. You yes. know what's going on. So, what exactly is the objective of this letter? If the president was going to read it. I think it would be amazing for it to be acknowledged. You know, hear the young people out. Why are we still studying work that was written or compiled years and years ago? Mm. You know, times have changed. We're definitely not living in the 90s anymore. So, uh, Making me feel old. <laughs> so I wasn't even a thought in the 90s. But, um, no, you're yeah. not. You're far from that. So it would be amazing to incorporate factors like that, you know, the effects of social media on your mental health, have mm -hmm. that input into the curriculum. Sure. You know, even we have business studies which is one of the studies that both of Nolwazi and I share. Mm -hmm. So, But it would be amazing if we could shift, create a shift in that space, you know, incorporate, you know, maybe teach people how to network, teach people entrepreneurship. How do we go about this? Because all we're learning in school is fact, fact, fact. What do we do with these facts? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by two incredible minds. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm saying, Lord, there's hope. Because <laughs> girls your age... Grade 12, doing well in school, they aspire to have nothing but a big following on social media. True. And that social media following comes with a price. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And some of the price you have to pay not necessarily resonate with where you're going in life. True. Compromises have to be made. Mm -hmm. And as I'm listening to you, you guys are like a spark of fresh air, like <laughs> this breath of fresh air saying, thank God we got young, powerful first lady, excuse me, president, <laughs> presidential <laughs> candidates that we see at grade 12. This is amazing. Thank you. And, and you, how do you stay away from the influence of other female uh, so-called influencers on social media who you say, that's not for me? Mm. Like, how do you make that choice to say, Yes, girl, you're great, but that's not my path. Because a lot of, if we go look at anybody, you know, with mm -hmm. over a million following, they're not posting their safe space idea. Mm -hmm. They're not posting their metric results. True. <laughs> I don't see them posting no, their definitely. letter to the president. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you'll see them in Dubai. You'll see them in Dubai on yachts. <laughs> on yachts. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Uh -huh. So in my, um, personally, uh, I 
do not have any type of social media whatsoever. I know it's crazy. Um, <laughs> I'm 18, but I don't have social media. Genuinely, I just have WhatsApp just to talk to people, you know, keep in communication. But for me, I think I had to make that choice, you okay. know, to better myself, what is good for me. So even um, on the followings that I do have, I have a TikTok, but I only follow people who I aspire to be, mm. people who inspire me to be better, mm. something that I would see myself doing, you know, in the future. Wow. My, the, my ideal person. That's the kind of people that I follow. Incredible. Definitely. That's so. incredible. Nulazi, what about you? Well, I have Instagram and I won't <laughs> Hello? lie. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> but it was difficult at first. I won't lie and say sure. it was a smooth sale. I just made choices. Um, I realized it was becoming difficult when I started deleting my posts, feeling like they aren't good enough to be there. Wow. And then I came to realize, no, I can't let other, how other people look and what other people say on that app determine what I should post and how I should feel about my posts. What? Oh, that deserves a bomb and a horn <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> wow. Treat you to me, girl. <laughs> yes. So, um, when we started this whole business idea, that's when I also got help myself because I spoke to Nunjabul. I'm like, because we weren't friends before the app. Mm. We were just classmates. Oh, she's the smart girl. Yeah, ex-head girl of her primary school. <laughs> I was the head girl of my primary school. I just know her. Listen she, to those credentials. <laughs> she's smart. <laughs> Listen to those credentials. So you were, you, were, you were head girl in your primary school. I was. You were head girl in your primary yes. school. So you guys only date head boys. <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely not. Definitely oh, okay, not. Okay, okay, okay. That okay, idea. Okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> so when I started talking to her, I came to realize that the reason why I have Instagram in the first place was wrong because I had Instagram to see how other people are succeeding, but I didn't wow. do it for me. And then I deleted all my posts. Then I started all over, started following people that I like, people I like reading their captions, for so you example. you stop following me. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even like that. Wow. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So yes. then I started reposting stories where I, stories where I don't even care who sees them. Like even wow. if the camp because before I got an iOS as you said, the pressure was high. Mm. I used to have an Android, you know? It would be like, please borrow me an iPhone so I can post. <laughs> so then I got off with it. Like my, my Samsung is good enough to take pictures. Amen. And I don't care who says what. Ooh. I feel confident yes. in my own skin. Yes. And bear in mind I'm quite dark in complexion <laughs> so that also used to be a factor like all of these girls are so light skinned then I decided no you know what I look beautiful I can't draw eyebrows I don't care I still deserve to be on Instagram you're not even official you just officially turned 18 yes <laughs> and you sound like somebody who's like back in their youth you like I'm inspired by how you are mentally strong to see through the whole masquerade because it's nothing but I, I think for me what we see on social media is scripted and True. And, and behind it there's real truth it's, it's you know and, and, and you see through it not everybody can not everybody has that discernment and when did you develop that sense of uh, foresight to understand what's you know um, genuinely true and what's fabricated because it's, it's, it's a high level of wisdom. I respect you for that. <laughs> Thank you. So I was 16. Yeah. Late At grade 16. 10. Yes. Late grade, grade 10. 10. Yes. Wow. I decided I don't need social media to justify how I should look, mm. what I should be able to do at 16. I feel like I'm good enough. Me and my so Vaseline good. on my lips, I deserve to be on Instagram. Just I like don't a, care how many likes I get. You didn't say Labella out of Vaseline. <laughs> Vaseline. <laughs> Damn. I mean... My captions, I'm like, okay, they're all fancy captions. Right. If I decide to post, I want to be motivational. And if my peers don't feel like that's something they should like, that's for them. Okay. People out there, there's someone out there who will be touched by what I have to say. Hallelujah. Someone out there is willing to listen. Yes. And I'm yes. <laughs> Sorry, I had to drop a bomb on It's why. Yes. So as the years developed, I then realized that, you know what? I'm doing this for me. And Amen. I'm doing it and I'm trying to instill it in my younger siblings because she has she now has Instagram and she's 12 years old and you should hear her speak about celebrities. I like who because of this and this and that. I'm like no, don't do that. No. Don't do that to yourself. You're beautiful just as you are. Hallelujah. You do not have you, to look like anyone or sound like anyone for you, that matter. You said something about dark skin that caught my attention. 
and I'm and, and, and it's it, I'm glad you, you went there because I wanted to hear from a perspective of somebody who's um, of your tone which I truly believe it's um, not just beautiful yes. but it's, it's unsurpassed I really think you know it, it doesn't get better and and, and and I don't like using these phrase and cliches that cut the berry sweet to the juice because I've tasted sweet juice that wasn't dark <laughs> that the berries are exactly. not that dark exactly. but, but take me there because at 16 to realize that to a lot of people being dark being black can be a disadvantage Mm-mm. but True. you used it to your advantage that is incredible and I respect you for that <laughs> but something helped you to make that leap mentally what was that? I think being in a multiracial school really helped. Okay. Because now we are surrounded by people of a different color. True. But then I realized they're not the ones against us. It's us black people Yo! against each other. Definitely. Because light-skinned girls have a lot to say about being dark-skinned. And I got to a place, a very dark place, where I started resenting my skin color. I opted for Google, like I even Googled what I can use to lighten up my skin. And then it got to a point where my mom is also dark skinned, by the way. Like, I love how she does not use makeup and she enhances her dark skin. It's like, it, it's just beautiful. Then I was just like, if only I can be like her, not use um, filters that make me light skinned. Hmm. So I was like, you know what? It's time that I take pride in my skin. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm dark skinned and there's nothing that's going to change about that. It's either I embrace it or I just keep putting myself into the dark place. And as you can see, me and Njabula are quite dark skinned. <laughs> so no, 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 you and Njabula are quite remarkable. You are dark skinned head girls. <laughs> Let's put that on the checklist. Thank you. Yes. Dark skinned, brilliant, powerful mind. Excuse me? <laughs> Did you know how many light-skinned girls are under your leadership? <laughs> Hello. Okay, let's get back. It's not about color, but it was, a, for me, uh, I, I appreciate that what, what you said because we need people like yourself mm-hmm. to carry that message of self-worth, not from a point of motivating, but living the actual life. Because when you motivate, you could be on stage. And when you get off stage, I've seen motivation, motivational speakers dealing with depression. I've seen them scripted, but I appreciate you going there. It's important. And, 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 and you, you, you're still in high school. These are things that parents don't know, that kids already at high school level are using filters to fight their identity, man. So when an opportunity presents itself, you'll be rushing to the next building that has signs of light, skin lightning, <laughs> what, what taking wrong substances and all that, that affects your neurons. And next thing, your cognitive energy is not as vivacious as it used to be. You, you know what I mean? Like, these are the things that we have to address. But I like hearing from you. And Nunjabulo, I mean, I can imagine, you know, uh, the two of you, the type of conversations you have, when you see other people struggling with the identity what are they what do you guys how do you guys do you reach out how do you guys deal with that i mean how do you guys reach out to those that are struggling with themselves because i think you should be the custodians of <laughs> um self-identity like be the <laughs> ones that actually fly the flag our, our sisters are struggling with their weight they're, they're struggling with their hair look at you I, I'm, I, I'm looking at what you're saying, but I'm, I want to take it to the hair part. You spoke about the skin lightening. Yes. There's got to be a reason why you have no weave on. <laughs> <laughs> and that reason must be something very That's very personal. <laughs> okay. But I respect that as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because in, in all shape and form, what you're saying resonates with how you look. Exactly. Yeah. I, I know we're supposed to talk about Safe Space, this amazing app. I know we're supposed to talk about the great work you've done, but this conversation is evolving to s- dimensions that I'm appreciating because I, I love our uh, listeners out there to hear one of the big problems we struggle with, which is self-hate. You guys dealt with more resistance, more pressure from your very own black people and probably got appreciated by your white peers. Yeah. Whew. Isn't it that crazy? It is. I'm sure even with your competition, they were like, it's never going to happen. But you still did it regardless. You still established this app. Like our dream was too big for our peers. They'd be like, but they said identify a problem in the community. You guys Mm. are going worldwide. And we sat together (laughs) like, this is the reason why we are partners. Exactly. 
definitely no Lois and I share the same sentiments I think that's why it was definitely God's plan that we got together like she said we weren't even friends so how we got together is honestly a miracle <laughs> but I thank God for her like genuinely she's yeah. like my other half but we definitely um, agree that there's definitely a problem with um, you know self image issues mm-hmm. especially thanks to social media nowadays mm. um, so you go online you know seeing all these people lighter than you you know you go online seeing all, all these people with hair and weave and doing everything this that and the third and you're like oh my gosh I look nothing like that what I, in the world am I doing here but, but the, the crazy thing is I've got pictures with people that I took like a year ago and we look the same exactly and today what happened I'm like <laughs> What happened? They're so light. Exactly. And that's them dealing with themselves. Yes. We get that. Okay? Definitely. We're not here to crucify them. Yes. How do we help them? Definitely. I think, for example, taking it back to safe space, then creating those channels where we can remove the idea, that narrative, that being lighter is better or looking a certain way mm. anyhow is better, makes you smarter, more intelligent, you know, makes you better than. Like, honestly, I, I still can't believe that we've created that narrative, even in Africa. Like, why aren't we celebrating African minds, African beauty? You know, why aren't we promoting young African minds, you know, to create a space? where we can thrive to create a space where you know nobody else has to go through the things that we've been going through (laughs) this is an incredible conversation ladies and gentlemen in touch with your boy touch I'm joined by Nonjabulo Zikali and Noloazi Sindani these are two matriculants from Secunda Hur School Yella Prat Afrikaans Sosabur a big Afrikaans Yeah, a big Yeah, I'm still learning till today. Yeah, I love my Afrikaans friend. I'm not mad at them at all. Um, <laughs> yeah. But we we got a deal. Your generation. I would like to hear more of. How do you avail yourself to share this wisdom that you have? Because we cannot keep dealing with the same social problems that we dealt with pre-94 and post-1994. And for those who are listening internationally, 94 is when South Africa had its first democratic uh, dispensation. Um, Politically, we're still waiting for the economic part. (laughs) Um, And yet we find ourselves dealing with the same mental and social problems that existed before. Mm. You said something profound. The competition that you guys won was identify a problem in your community Mm -hmm. and your own black peers were condescending towards you because your idea surpassed The the community's problem. You thought worldwide and you chose to build an app that links professionals to connect with people that are dealing with personal and mental problems. This is incredible. <laughs> what that tells me, you guys were never defined by where you're from. No. And True. I and where I would like to know, have you traveled the world? Yo, we'd like to. We'd love we'd to. We'd definitely love to. Um on my side I've never been out of South Africa. Me too. Like not at all. And so. you come with this idea that is relevant worldwide. This is incredible. I feel like I'm talking to two female Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and I say that because, you know, when you look at Christ, his whole entire life existed around the 25 kilometer radius. Mm-hmm. But he's inspired the world. This guy's mm-hmm. everywhere, man. Like, whoa. You understand what I'm yes, saying? It's amazing. And yeah. Secunda is a small town. It is. A very small very town. Very small. <laughs> no, Secunda is so small. If you're driving 120, you can drive past it. I don't see a Coca-Cola sign. <laughs> I've been so there. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> but look at how you're putting this small town on the map. Here's a part that you're over 18, right? Yes. So here's a part that, I, that also I'm struggling with. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen brilliant minds like yourself making a pitch to an investor. And I'm talking about this is the sad cancer in our society where... Mm-hmm. Somebody who's supposed to cover you and you open yourself to this person. They promise you, they, they make all these promises and the people that's supposed to cover you are the first to actually break you. 
I've seen it happen to a lot of talented, brilliant minds. And I'm urging you as ladies, please, your pride is your currency. Protect it. Thank you. No rand or dollar can is 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 um, or amounts to the charisma, the persona, the brilliancy that is invested in you. So please do not do not capitulate. Don't give in if they don't hear you or they didn't reciprocate. Walk away with your brilliancy. It, it takes away nothing from who you are for somebody to say, no, I can't help you because you refuse to come on a date with me. Mm. Because that's what happens in our society. That's true. Sadly. Yeah. Before I connect with your brains, I want to connect with your emotions. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And, and I'm saying this as big brother. You're going to deal with that. So mm. I need you to be prepared when you walk in that room like, oh, touch told us this. This was going to happen. Mm. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, that's the lust of the flesh and the shallow of men. And, and, and I'm not any better, but with the little I have experienced in this world, being the older brother with two sisters, these are the challenges when we talk, I hear ladies go through all the time. So I will be the first <laughs> to want to be on the list of your investors. I want, I want, I want in. Wow. <laughs> I'm serious. That's amazing. I said I want in. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Should I call the law? I'll, I'll call my lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> let's do, how do we, how do we, how do we, ta- how do we take off? Come now, let's round up. I how do we take off? I'm not limiting you guys to just an app called yes. Safe Space. Mm-hmm. I think there's so much. I've seen so, already just sitting with you guys, I can tell you of four things that, we can do in the next 12 months. Wow. And it gotta happen. Okay. One, you have to get on the road. Somebody must fund you guys to do a nationwide self-development tour. Yes. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> it is that important. Mm-hmm. Two, I know you say you're not on social media, but we're gonna have to build, build this brand. I can the next day you're going to you're going in university. Yeah. <laughs> we Am are. I right? Yes. Yep. When are we done with exams this year? Somewhere in early December, early not December mistaken. or late November, depending on how COVID affects the education system. Right. Yes. But I can tell you now, and I promise you, I got people that can agree with me. I have engaged you over the past 45 minutes, whatever the time is. I didn't even look at the time because I'm just <laughs> engaged like that. And, and, I, and I'm, I'm in awe of what we have talked about and the possibilities of what we could do but at the same time I also feel that it's my responsibility to guide these two vessels wow. uh, whether it's with my pocket or it's with my experience you appreciate that wow. that would be highly appreciated do, do, do you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. yeah we, we, we cannot afford the two of you to go as, uh, astray mm-hmm. or any of you two are you both planning to go to the same college Hopefully. Hopefully that's what we want. Yeah. We would love to stay together because personally for me, I wouldn't have anyone else besides me when I come across our obstacles or seen as university obstacles, how our, like, as how our country would put it, with anyone else but her. Hmm. Because I'm as strong today and I'm, in, I'm as able to express myself yes. today because of her. Wow. I feel, feel the same, same way. way. I feel it's, exactly uh, the same I way. I feel like we're about to have a few bombs. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, switch up the camera. <laughs> Gosh, okay. Really though, post metric, what are we doing apart from fulfilling our four years of degree or diploma? Post metric. Uh, what, what, like, I, I know you're not going to school so that you can have an idea of what legacy or what you want to build. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. You're clear with what you guys want to do. Yes. What am I looking at apart from two individuals? Is this a business? Is this an? Is this? Is this? Is this like a Fortune 500 company? What am I looking at? Tell me what is the what is this collabo of Norazi and Nonjabul? I don't want to say it's a brand, a company yeah. or a brand because I'm limiting it now. Should Woo! one of us pass away, Definitely. that's now a limit. Definitely. What should happen? 
I want it to be a legacy left for future generations Definitely. to come. So we're looking at we're looking at a force. Yes, we Definitely. want to be catalysts for change in this country. That's Definitely. the one thing that we want to look at. Definitely. I, I think we need to end this conversation <laughs> and, and have another conversation. <laughs> I'm being serious and God bless you man. Shout out to your parents. Thank you so much. Shout out to them. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Non Jabulo in your life, who do you take? Who do you draw most of your inspiration from? You're a thousand percent my mother. Mm. My mother's one of the strongest women I know. Honestly, you wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for her. I know it sounds cliche wow. like mom, mom, but she's definitely my biggest motivator and my biggest supporter. So, definitely my mother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a thousand wow. percent. No Lazi? Definitely has to be my mom too because I'm a child that suffers from health issues so she's always there to pick me up when i'm at my lowest because whenever i fall sick i realize it does not only affect my my health because i start i i give up at times like exactly 2 weeks ago i went through this being unable to breathe i thought you know what no jabul i'm losing my life this is it this is the end but she's always there to to hold me up and assure me that you still have a legacy to build who's going to create safe space if you want to give up on yourself now Ooh. use that pump use whatever resources you're given to empower yourself and to make sure that you live on to create the legacy that you and Njabula are working on so 2 weeks ago you ran out of breath what was the result of covid oh, no. or are you asthmatic i'm asthmatic i got you oh, and wow. seeing the weather it is quite cold the past hey. few weeks so i found myself having an asthma attack in the early ams of monday evening and i couldn't even call for help because i couldn't breathe my my nebulizer was in my wardrobe because it's been months since i lost had an attack so i lost hope because losing up 5 days of my trick school days wow. i felt like i'm never going to pick up i'm failing i'm missing out exams i'm missing work you know i am having a conversation with a good friend of mine is my mentor right now okay and i said to him this early morning i said god is a complex unit and yet is such a simple thing Mm. He uses the unqualified to qualify people. Mm. Like he picks from the, the least. He, it's it's not perfect people that perfect us. It's the most imperfect. The ones who we expect that the least from produce the best. Definitely. I mean you 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 are this dynamite and I want to look at you thinking that you're dealing with some asthma issues you deal with but everybody who has inspired me had bigger challenges than i do can you imagine that mm. I, i don't remember being inspired by somebody who was perfect that's true i promise you there's a so there's this guy if you drive on william nickel past monte casino okay one hand okay he sells papers every day so the other day was a sunday and he's been there for long and i don't read newspapers I, i i you know like i just don't have that time anymore to sit in front of a newspaper but i felt like i got to give him this 100 rand that i had in my pocket mm-hmm. so i rolled down the window say hey i gave him the money he's like ah ti was we am rule and jalo so no taji he knows what to take me pep because when you pay pep i seem to like so i have the 100 rand he says no una khaf yo guy it's my gift to you wow how amazing yo. it must have felt I teared up when I drove off. <laughs> I teared up. He says, "No." He's like, then I asked him the other day. I said, "Yo, why did you refuse to take the hundred rand note from mm. me?" He said, "My first encounter, I wanted you to never forget me, mm. because people think the fact that I got one hand, it means the other one is there for handouts. Mm. This other hand is there to help people, is there to change lives." Yo. Whoa. I was like, <laughs> I don't mind having one hand. <laughs> This what I mean. Do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? What saying? Very profound. He girl. said, I am not a charity case, and the only way I could leave an indelible mark in your life was to give you the the only thing I have. He says that paper that day I was nine rand short, but mm. I knew that I planted a seed in you. Mm. I was like, yo. Some of us Lord Jesus this man needs an opportunity. Mm. Some of us are just an opportunity away from being the next Elon Musk. One opportunity away. Definitely. But people will drive past and never thought in that man is this abundance of wisdom mm. and knowledge. From a guy on the street and I'm listening to you. 
when I walked in and I first met you guys, I'm like, oh, great, high school students <laughs> in their uniforms. Oh, gosh, I got to get out. We got to finish this interview so they can go back and study. And they're from Secunda. It's it's two, three-hour drive. Yes. It's the three-hour drive to come all the way for this interview. But when I heard about your work, I was like, I'm not letting them go. These are some power minds. Yo. So one day you're going to drive three hours to your meeting and probably chat her back private. Because <laughs> that's the kind of... Is- yes! Speak it into existence. Yes! <laughs> We're manifesting. <laughs> Hello. Yo, man. I want to wrap up now and get into the easier side of our conversations. Okay. You're young. It's election year. You're probably voting for the first time. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yep. Who's making sense to you, Nonjabula, right now politically? Because you have to be an active citizen. You have to vote. Just definitely. I can just throw a name out there. Who's making sense to you now? Because you're voting in October. Who will it be and why? We are. So I don't think it'll be correct to give away my vote. No, I'll give it away. (laughs) No, 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 seriously. I I wanna understand. We we need to this is the future. Mm -hmm. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. You could be like a big IFP supporter and you got a valid reason why. Mm -hmm. Don't hold back. It's important. You're not the type who just votes simply because they gave you a t-shirt. Mm-mm, definitely There not. are reasons why. And maybe your reason is going to help somebody else. Definitely. Okay, I'll take it to Nolazi while you're thinking about your answer. Okay, firstly, um, not to badmouth any political party, but it will definitely not be ANC. For the simple reason being, my grandparents and my parents don't want to move away from ANC. They brought us here, they brought us here. What are they doing to, for us hmm. now, currently? <laughs> yes, they brought us through apartheid and... You know, Wow. Okay. But looking at the all, the different political parties, none of them are perfect. But some, if they were given the opportunity, sure. they could surely make a difference. Okay. So personally, I would go with DA for now. Okay. Simply because I listen to them sometimes in parliament. They make some sort of sense that mm-hmm. they're not looking at it from uh, we just want to empower this race or that race. Right. But they sometimes speak so much sense that I, I actually connect with them on a personal level like... If, they, if only they were given a chance and not just being taken for, oh, it's a white party. So they don't could bring you think much change. That it, you know, like it's reformed. Um, DA is like Coke light. It's mm. still Coke. They were, mm. in, you say, given a chance. They were national party. They were the one ruling before 1994. Mm. So the, I'm, I'm just giving mm-hmm. you the, that, that information. Okay. What you see to a DA is national party. So the architects, the, you know, I'm just saying, they led us in apartheid they 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 let us knowing that we don't have opportunities to mm-hmm. capital or to Definitely. you know they still were in power when we didn't have the ability to go to white schools like you do today okay. so Same. what you call da is national party on red bottoms Definitely. On you know, <laughs> that's what it is i'm just i'm just giving you facts yeah i understand just so you careful mm-hmm. not to bring back what your mother your father your grandfather fought against True. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Definitely. Yeah. And I'm glad. You see why we have to have this conversation? Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? We Definitely. have to have this conversation. That's another thing that I yeah. think should be implemented. We don't really talk about these things. No. We don't think about these they things. They didn't even change the exactly. colors. Exactly. They still kept National Party colors. Exactly. They just changed the name. True. <laughs> yeah. You're still so drinking true. the same Coke, even if it's in the Fanta can. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. These are things that I think the youth needs to be told. Because in matric, I don't think we really even think about this. It's like we turned 18 and we're like, oh, well. Well, legal now, what does that even mean? You know, right? I don't think we understand the implications of it. So definitely we need to be educated on these things. It's and I'm important. glad. Yeah, I'm glad that we're having this talk. Right can now. I say something on the a part of being legal? My baby sister just said, oh, you're 18 now. You can drink alcohol. My mom, <laughs> <laughs> my, the first thing my mom said right. was just you're because not, she's 18 doesn't drinking. mean she can mm. drink alcohol. Yes, according to the country's laws, she's now legal. But that that's not what it means. So I feel like according to our society at the moment, the moment you're 18, my mom cannot tell me what to do. I mean, I have an ID now. And I'm a, I'm a lawful citizen now, so I can swim up alcohol. So I feel like these conversations are shied away from because mm. we're focusing on the wrong the things. Wrong stuff. Yes, yeah. we Definitely. are, mm-hmm. certainly. Hence, we have to see through face value. Mm. you got to. Okay, so I hope you will go and research more. Definitely. And, 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 and before you put an X on that party, you have to say, does it resonate with the South Africa I am yearning to see in mm-hmm. my lifetime? Mm-hmm. So please don't take us back. <laughs> well, definitely. <laughs> definitely. 
Definitely. Like I said, you know, it would be amazing if we could have something like that incorporated into the curriculum or just motivational talk so that we understand what being 18 actually means sure. in the bigger scheme of things. Right. You know, so I think that's one of the things that I would definitely look at actually researching that, mm. figuring out what speaks to me yeah. rather than what I've been told. Okay. Because you definitely have these outside voices like, oh, if you don't vote for this, you know, you're not my child. Because my right. dad told me that. Definitely, I was told. It was like, if you don't vote for right. this party, you know, right. it's like, so it's like you're confused. You're like, okay, do I do this because I was told or do I do this because it's something that I believe in? Mm-hmm. Fantastic. So definitely, I'll definitely be going with the votes that resonates with me. I like that. I'll say that. I like that. I like that. It's <laughs> very important Mm -hmm. and I think you gotta also you know communicate the same knowledge Mm. to your peers to say guys verify before you trust Mm. you know the same applies okay let's move on to the next the type of man that you see coexisting with you give me three qualities ambitious Okay. Someone with goals, you know, because I have goals for myself, you know, have something in mind for your future. Even if you're not there yet, envision yourself, work towards that. That's someone that I would want by my side. Mm. Firstly, I'd like to go with someone who won't be threatened by the power of a woman. Mm. Woo! Definitely. Good luck with that. <laughs> okay. I don't want some. I don't want to be someone. I, I, I do not want to be someone who is goal driven in everything. But then the moment I achieve my goals mm. and he's not there yet, he wants to dethrone me or mm. to take away the 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 the, the acknowledgement and the credit I deserve I hear you. for what I've worked for. For wow. the, first things first, a man that won't be threatened by the power of a, uh, of a, of woman. a woman. Secondly. A person, as Nanjabula said, who's goal driven. I mean, I can't have goals alone. Mm. Where do you want? Even if you want to be a security guard, if it's what you aim for and you have reasons and it motivates you and it's what will make you happy for the next 20 years, be it. Do as if it's what drives you and you feel like you can do this and you love it and it will sure. change lives. Do it. Man. Wow. You see, my, my cameraman started nodding. He wanted, to cry. he wanted to cry because he might consider being a security guard from today. He's thinking about it. He's like, man, I might have to resign. <laughs> you gave me, did you say your third one? Oh, my third one has to be religious wise um, Christian because I grew up in a Christian home. Okay. So I feel like our values will be more or less the same if we follow the same religion instead of. Against each other. Wow. Man, I am. Oh. How do I say this? I want to pride myself right now for being in your space. Safe space. You live up to your app, (laughs) which is called Safe Space. I'm honored. Thank you for spending this amazing quality conversation time, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. I think that the power of creation manifests from a spoken word. Mm -hmm. We gave birth to something today. We don't know what it is yet, Mm -hmm. but don't discount the fact that this moment was legendary. Definitely. For real. Mm -hmm. I've had probably 20,000 interviews in my life and this is probably one of the most challenging interviews because it leaves us with so much work to do post this Mm. conversation true you understand what I'm saying definitely it's like we got work to do I feel like rolling (laughs) sleeves after this conversation Mm -hmm. so ladies let's go create magic let's do it thank you yes let's do it thank you ladies and gentlemen we will connect again it's been real we got work to do (laughs) Um, in touch with Tibo Touch log on right now touchhd.co.za touchhd.com And um, these are the conversations you're going to keep hearing. There's so much that we don't see on our headlines because these amazing two ladies um, will not sell the papers. Their story is not juicy. It's not controversial. Um, They'll probably make the headlines if one of them is on drugs or is caught doing something. And I really think the media has a responsibility um, to bring back the pride of our society to uphold the right identity of our ladies. We cannot have campaigns of 16 days of activism and post all of that. All our headlines are half-naked women, our scandals are all things that do not develop or build our society. So 
You're going to hear a lot of these stories on Touch HD, and that's why we're here. God bless. Devo Touch. Touch HD.